Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. My wife and I spent last weekend in Las Vegas. Now, long story there, but basically my nephew won a trip to Las Vegas, but he's under 21 and they wouldn't let him actually use it. So he gave it to us and my wife and I decided to just treat it like a weekend out. So we didn't do anything fancy. We just met up with some friends and then also did some shopping for places that we normally can't get to in Hawaii. You know, things like Trader Joe's and Ikea and Chipotle. Now, while I was there, I still had a lot of work to do. In fact, I was finishing up my Pow Kitty RGB 30 video, which I ended up doing in the hotel room. Now, it just so happened I had a bunch of travel-minded accessories that I needed to review as well, so I thought I would knock out both of those in one fell swoop. So I think this will be a fun video. I'm going to show you all the things that I set up in terms of making a mobile workstation, but then also, of course, using it for gaming as well. And of course, we'll take a look at all those accessories and see if any of them are a good fit for you while you're on travel. And so without any further delay, let's go ahead and jump in. Now, the entire idea of this video came about because of this brick right here, which I've had for a couple weeks now. This is a new charging bank from a company called Ugreen, which I've featured before. Now, even though this is massive, this is not actually a battery. This is just one big charging station. So it's the kind of thing you would leave sitting on your desk and then charge various things with it. Let's take a look at the box, bearing in mind that this thing has traveled over 5,000 miles in the past week. But as you can see here, it has a total of 300 watts and five different charging ports. Four of them are USB-C and the bottom one is USB-A. And depending on the port, they do provide different wattages. So the very top one is 140 watts. The next two are going to be 100 watts. Then the bottom USB-C port is 45. And then finally, the USB-A port is rated for up to 22 and a half watts. Now, as you can imagine, with these kind of charging bricks, things can get pretty complicated when it comes to those charging numbers. But they actually make it pretty easy within their instruction manual. They have all the different ports listed, as well as the combinations that you could be using. And I think most importantly, it's worth noting that no matter what, the top one will supply a full 140. Now, like I mentioned, this is a pretty bulky solution altogether. In fact, even the cable is full sized. Instead, I would think of this as basically an all in one solution. So if you only wanted to bring one brick, this is going to cover everything. Absolutely no problem. And here's a quick example of my work setup. I'm kind of embellishing right here because usually I wouldn't need all five ports at once. So in this setup here, I'm charging an Apple Watch, an iPhone, my Pow Kitty RGB 30, and then also giving a full 140 watts to my laptop and then also charging my iPad at the same time. And this is a very typical audio setup for me when I'm recording my voiceover. The mic is powered by the iPad and I record all my audio into that. And at the same time, I do all my editing on a MacBook, but usually connected to a larger monitor. And this allowed me to complete my RGB 30 review video and get it out on time. Now, that being said, there are some downsides to this brick. The first thing I noticed is that after a couple weeks of use, it got quite a few scratches on the front. And this really was just kind of normal wear and tear. You know when you try to plug a USB port in and maybe you miss that first time, those are these scratches right here. And so I can only imagine after several months of use, this will probably get pretty scratched up everywhere. The other thing about it is I'm not really sure it's very travel friendly because it's so big and bulky. And this thing is heavy. It's 837 grams, which is a little bit less than two pounds altogether. And finally, the other downside to this is the price. This thing is retailing for $269 right now. Now, to be fair, there's been a coupon available for most of the time, including right now. And so the average price is really about $200. All the same, that is a lot of money to pay for a charging solution. Granted, I looked around and I wasn't able to find anything else that provided a full 300 watts like this. But do bear in mind, this is a very top end product. And the reason why I even accepted it as a review unit was because it got to that 140 watts. As we'll talk about later, 100 watts was my goal power delivery, and that's because I wanted to be able to use it for gaming, and again, we'll go over this here in a moment. And if this is understandably a little bit too rich for your blood, there are other options available for a much lower price. For example, Ugreen also sent out this other charger. This one maxes out at 100 watts altogether. However, this one still has a lot of ports. There are three USB-C and one USB-A. And the outputs here are a little bit tricky. The first two are going to be 100 watts, and then the other two are going to be 22.5. Either way, as you can see, this one is much smaller and is its own charging brick too, so you can plug this directly into the wall. And so specifically, if you're looking for one port that will do 100 watts and then also have multi-charge capability, this one will work. 
And thankfully, this is quite a bit cheaper than the other one. It maxes out at $75 when not on sale. Now, obviously, this is also quite a bit of money to charge your devices. But again, this is kind of the going rate right now for this high-end charging capability. Now, you're probably wondering why I wanted to get to that 100-watt charging point. And this is a two-part answer. The first one is the fact that I brought the ROG Ally with me on travel. And the main reason why I brought the Ally this time around is because I'm always bringing the Steam Deck. And so I wanted this one to get a little bit of love, too. And yes, I do think that the ROG Ally is a great travel device. Now, admittedly, I didn't play it that often when actually in the city. I mostly would do it in the airplane in the airport. All the same, I think it worked out really well when I just wanted to play for little bursts here and there. In particular, I found that the sleep function worked really well. So yes, the first reason why I wanted at least 100 watts of charging power was because I was using the ROG Ally, which can accept more power than the Steam Deck. In fact, 65 watts is the sweet spot for this machine. Now, the second reason why I wanted a lot of charging power is because I was bringing a full dock for my entire setup. And coincidentally, this one's also from Ugreen. Now, they're not sponsoring this video in any way. It just so happens these are the things that I brought with me. Now, I get a lot of offers to make videos about Steam Deck docks. I get emails about it almost every day. And for the most part, I've been refusing all of them because they don't seem to really offer anything new. But the reason why I decided to accept this one is because it has 100 watt fast charging. And this is perfect for this example. I can provide 65 watts to the ROG Ally, but then also I can supply power to other devices hooked into the dock. So let's take a quick look here. This one has the standard Steam Deck plug here at the top, and it has some nice rubber padding inside so you don't damage your device. On the back, we can see each of our different peripherals. On the far left, we have our charging port, and then we have our HDMI out capable of 4K and 60 frames per second. Next, we have our gigabit ethernet port, and then three ports that provide five gigabits per second of data transfer. Two of these are gonna be USB-A, and then one is also USB-C. And these ports are gonna be especially handy for the other accessories we're gonna show in this video. Other than that, there's not a lot to talk about here other than the rubber padding here on the bottom. And I like the fact that it also has a pretty low profile file, which means it's not going to inhibit any sort of airflow. Now, in terms of fitting the ROG Ally, it's not a perfect fit. It'll definitely fit inside, but you kind of have to angle it just so. After all, this was made with the Steam Deck in mind. Now, from a Steam Deck perspective, this works out great. Not only will the regular Steam Deck fit, but it'll also fit with a case. For example, the Kill Switch one I'm using here from Deepran fits just fine. Not only that, the plug itself is large enough that you can plug it directly into the Kill Switch case, unlike the official one from Valve. So that's one of the reasons why I like this one so much is because it'll work really well both for the Steam Deck and other handheld PCs. Now you probably saw that really shiny controller I was using in this segment and so let's talk about the controller next. And this here is a special edition of the 8-Bit Do Ultimate Controller. And I've made a ton of different videos about this controller including a roundup of all the available options at the time. And this one here just came out. It's a special edition that's only available on their website. And even though I own about five or six of these controllers already, I still couldn't help myself in picking this one up, even though it did cost an outrageous $90 altogether. And this controller was designed in celebration of the Nintendo Famicom's 40th anniversary, which is happening this year. And so yes, here it is in all its glory. And to be clear, this is generally the same controller that you can find from the Ultimate Bluetooth version, which usually retails for $70. It'll be compatible both with Nintendo Switch as well as various PCs. Now inside the box, they do have a couple goodies. For example, I have the first limited run here, and they only made 1,983, again in celebration of the year 1983. Anyway, it also comes with a couple goodies, including this keychain, and then also two sets of thumbstick covers. And finally, it has its own carrying case made out of synthetic leather. There's a couple things that are pretty neat about this. Number one, it has a back charging port. I'm not really sure if you would ever actually use this, but it is available. And it has some really high quality materials, including a metal zipper, which just feels really nice in the hand. Now, obviously this is not gonna be a full review of the controller, but you can see that first impressions, man, this thing is very shiny. The front is very glossy and has a grippy texture to it overall. Meanwhile, the back has the same design as the other controllers, so these bumpy kind of parts here in the grip. And then it also has back paddles and the ability to swap between Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz. But in general, the design and feel here is going to be very similar to other Abido Ultimate controllers. However, there's one other huge difference, and that it's using metal joysticks. These also still are using the Hall Effect sensors of the upper end model, but then they also have a clacky texture when you snap them left and right. 
And to me, this is super satisfying. Now, I don't think it's going to center as quickly as a plastic joystick, but all the same, I'm not playing this for like accuracy when playing a first person shooter game. Instead, it's just a really enjoyable experience. This is my first time using a full solid metal joystick like this, and I really like it. Couple other notes here, the buttons are also glossy, and when you have that glossy on glossy feel, it does make them very tight feeling when trying to slide across them. I also found that the glossy texture really secured my hands into place, it didn't feel like I was slipping at all. Next, I want to look at the charging dock. So this one says Famicom 40th Anniversary here on the front. But my favorite thing about this dock is that underneath it, the 2.4 GHz receiver is actually golden in color. And I think this is a really nice touch. So when you have everything set up, it's going to work exactly like I have shown in my other Ultimate Controller videos. You essentially can just pull it off the dock, and then it'll immediately start connecting, and you can play like that. And back in the hotel room, that's exactly what I did. So I was able to charge it when I had it plugged in, and then I would pull it off and start playing. And the thing I love about it is that it is a one USB port solution. If you keep the wireless dongle plugged into the dock and then the dock plugged into your device, that's all you're going to need. Not only will it charge your device when you have it plugged into the dock, but it'll also connect it when you pull it off. So among all of the things in this accessories video, I think this controller was absolutely unnecessary to use in this setup, but all the same, it was one of my favorite experiences. But if you're looking for some decent gaming at a much lower price point, then I would check out the other 8 Do Ultimate controllers I've shown on this channel before. Alright, and finally, the last accessory we're going to show here in this video is a portable monitor. And I've tested a bunch of these out on this channel before. In fact, about four months ago, I did a very similar review with a 3x2 aspect ratio monitor. And I found this one to be especially good when it came to retro gaming because it had that taller aspect ratio so you could see more on your screen. So the one we're testing here today is from the same company but with different specs. This one has a traditional 16x9 aspect ratio but it is 16.1 inches in size and it also has a 1080p resolution but a refresh rate of 144Hz. And the reason why I wanted to test this one in particular is because of that high refresh rate. Again, remember we're using the ROG Ally in this setup which can go up to 120Hz at least on the native screen. So my goal here is to see whether or not I can also get a high refresh rate on this portable monitor when on travel. Now inside the box we have a very typical setup. We have a USB-C cable which is going to be capable of both video out and power. And then we also have an HDMI to HDMI mini cable. Of course this one won't supply power so you're going to need a separate cable for that that's going to be a USB-C to USB-A cable like this. Now most of these monitors will come with a protective case that can also be used to stand the monitor up. But one of the things I like about this company is they also provide its own stand within the box. Now this one is not fancy at all, it's just a cheap plastic stand. But what I like about it is that it can go to various heights and then also various angles. And given the fact that it's so small and lightweight, I kind of don't mind having to lug this one around. And so I think this is a nice addition in case you don't want to use the one that comes with the protective shell. Now obviously this is not a super sturdy solution, but all the same when on travel and in a pinch, I think it'll work out fine. Anyway, here's the full setup. You can see the controller on the far right and then our charging stand here between that and the ROG Ally. And of note, I'm only using one of the USB-C ports with this setup. And this is plugged directly into that Steam Deck dock which has the ROG Ally inside. Let's take a closer look at those ports. On the far right you can see the charging port coming from that charging station. Next we have the HDMI out going into the monitor. And then to the left of that we have another USB-C port. This one's plugged into the 8-bit do charging dock. And then finally, on the far left, we have our USB-A port. And this one's also plugged into the portable monitor to supply its power. And really, that's it when it comes to the full gaming setup. Again, I'm only using that one USB-C port from the charging station. But this allows me to supply a full 65 watts of power to the ROG Ally. And when you supply it with the full power like that, the TDP will go up to 30 to 35 watts in a boost. Which means that when you have it plugged in like this, it's going to give you better performance than if you just played it off the battery. Now, like I mentioned before, I didn't spend a lot of time at all actually playing games in the hotel room. Really, I spent more time setting things up than actually playing. But all the same, I could definitely see this being a pretty fun experience if you happen to have a night in while on travel. And while it's not really being conveyed in this footage because we're literally just using our phones in a hotel room, the clarity and coloring on this monitor was actually pretty darn impressive. My only major complaint was the audio quality, which tends to be pretty low volume. And this is the same problem that happens with basically all of these portable monitors. Either way, playing these games on a 16-inch screen versus the 7-inch screen on the ROG Ally is quite a bit more impressive. 
Now, one of the limitations of using the Steam Deck dock is that it'll only go up to 60 frames per second. And so even though the ROG Ally is capable of doing 120 frames directly on the screen, when using a Steam Deck dock like this one, it's not going to carry through. So you're only going to get a 60 frames per second max. Now, the reason why I wanted to use this monitor in particular with the ROG Ally is because I was hoping it would take advantage of that higher refresh rate. So in my testing, I also plugged it directly USB-C from the ROG Ally into the monitor. While I found that this would supply power to the monitor while also providing video out, it would not go over 60 frames per second. And I found this to be pretty odd because in looking at other reviews, people were able to get it working, but usually when plugging in a PC. But as you can see here, even though I have the game running at 120 hertz directly on the device itself, when plugged in, it does not go up to 60 frames per second with the monitor. Okay, and so in wrapping things up here, looking at all the various accessories that I tested here in this video, let's talk about the things I learned from this experience and what I would do next time. To start, let's talk about that big old charging brick. Now, number one, this thing is super expensive at $200, but admittedly, over the past two weeks, I have found myself really enjoying it and using it all the time. The way I think about it is if I hadn't had it sent to me for review, I would never have bought this thing in the first place. However, now that I've been using it and understand exactly what it can do as far as providing power to basically everything all at once, I'm of the opinion now that if I didn't have it, I would actually be considering buying it myself. If anything, if you're interested in getting this much power, my best advice would be maybe to wait a little bit. As always, as more technology comes out, these prices will generally go down. Next, we'll talk about the Steam Deck stand. Now, there are so many different options out there right now. The reason why I like this one so much is because it can provide a full 100 watts of charging power. This means that it's going to work for both the Steam Deck and other handheld PCs that have a USB-C port on top. Now, if you look at the market, there are other Steam Deck docks that say they provide 100 watts of power. However, a lot of those are going to come from lesser known brands, which makes me a little bit nervous when we're talking about that much power delivery. And so part of the reason why I like this one so much is because it does come from Ugreen, which is a company I trust when it comes to power. For example, when I'm buying my own power products, I usually will buy from Ugreen or Anchor. Now, next up, we have the controller, and this thing is completely ridiculous, but all the same, it's probably my favorite accessory that I tested here in this video. Of course, there are many other controllers that you can use, especially those within the Ultimate line. And so I would say if you are going to be traveling with a handheld and do want to play it externally, you definitely are going to want a controller, but maybe not this one. Also, if you do get one that has a dock, I think you're probably better off just taking the dongle instead of the full dock setup. It's really a little bit overboard. And finally, we have the monitor. Now, one of the main reasons why I wanted to use it was because of that high refresh rate. But with the setup that I used in this video here, it wasn't a very good fit. Now, after doing all this testing, I still wanted to verify that it would get to a higher refresh rate. And I was able to confirm that with certain mini PCs that have HDMI 2.1, as well as the Xbox Series S, and then also the ROG Ally when using the XG Mobile attachment, all of those were able to get higher refresh rates. So this monitor is definitely capable of reaching those higher speeds, but in this particular travel-based use case, it is not a very good fit. Instead, you might be better off getting a cheaper portable monitor that only goes up to 60 hertz. And finally, truth be told, if I was to go on travel again with all these accessories, I would leave the monitor at home. Number one, it was kind of a pain to put in my luggage just because it was a little bit flimsy. And even though the monitor 16 inches is quite a bit bigger than the 7 inches on the Ally, instead in the future, I probably would just plug this into the hotel room TV and use that instead. When it comes down to it, it's a lot of fun kind of messing around with these accessories, especially on travel, to see what really works. And I surprised myself to find that among all of these accessories, I didn't really find any of them to be completely necessary. Some of them really enriched my life, especially that charging brick to just be able to charge everything at once. But when it comes down to it, I think all you really need is a good handheld and everything else is just going to be a bonus. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. When you go on travel, what accessories do you prefer? Or do you just prefer to keep everything lightweight? I'll have links to all this stuff down below. And as always, thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.